Thank you. Uh, um, good morning to everybody. Uh, this presentation is going to build upon uh, the previous presentation because it touches some aspects of each one. Uh, it has to do with project planning, it has to do with how to integrate uh, the environmental uh, impact assessment process into a project development cycle. And of course, at the end of the day, what everybody's looking as an outcome is to improve the environmental <coughs> and social performance of every program. So, uh, the PEMEX, uh, in, uh, in conjunction with the World Bank and some consultants, uh, has conducted or is conducting a, a major study which has five components. I'm going to touch upon the last component of that major study, which is the linking the environmental impact assessment process uh, and the project appraisal process of PEMEX. Just to begin, and also it touches on some of the questions uh, uh, raised previously, this particular process does incorporate the local regulations and, and national regulations, uh, particularly in Mexico. That's, that's one of the first things that, of course, a company like Pemex has to consider. What is the statute, uh, uh, what are the regulations that uh, govern the environmental impact assessment process? Well, SEMARNAT, which is the local Ministry of Environment, has a very clear process, guidelines, and even a, a very specific uh, processes and procedures on how to develop and uh, deliver this uh, environmental impact assessment process for state. So that's one of the major considerations that any company doing work in any country, and particularly Pemex in Mexico, has to do. The next one has, so of course <coughs> then, uh, Pemex also incorporates what they have as an internal process or management system. So they have to combine what the regulatory authority needs to do plus what their internal management system requires them to do. So those are two major components on how they will develop their environmental impact assessment process. There is a third uh, dimension to this, and is that then has adopted and established what is called the front-end loading process or model for their development of projects. What does that mean? That means that, and it, and it touches upon what the issuing uh, I think was discussing before, it touches, uh, it has to do with minimizing deviations on time and cost of projects, and of course incorporating best practices in processes relating to the planning and implementation of investment projects. Uh, just to go a little bit further into what front and loading means, because I think it's important uh, to capture the idea, it, it's, a, it's a gate gate approach process for project approvals. You do a, 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 an initial a phase of one or running loading one to identify and do your, your mainly conceptual a criteria and designs or pre-feasibility. Then you have a phase two to evaluate, three to define, and then you sanction the project to execute and operate. So what it does do is that has different gates and triggering point for making a decision, continuing with the project, and or improving upon that project. Put it in another words, if you look at a, at a front and loading process, the opportunities for value creation are at the fail one to fail three in, up front in the face of that project. That is where you can create the most value to a project. And also is where any changes to a project will have the least amount of cost involved for that particular development. That is, once the project is sanctioned, your opportunity for value creation will decrease, and the, any changes that you make to the project, the cost will be dramatically higher. And that's what is trying to this project reflect or represent. So the key is, well, how to integrate this environmental impact assessment process with that particular way of looking at projects under the front end loading of project. So the, one of the first tasks that we did is identifying already what the regulatory framework Pemex has to work with, what are the internal processes that they have to follow, and what is the, the new project uh, development process within Pemex, uh, uh, how it is conceptualized. We look at existing best practices, including the IA, the World Bank, of course, and the IFC performance standards, IPCA, uh, OGP, etc., and different uh, organizations that have been working on either how to better 
have or improve the environmental impact assessment process and how to integrate those into the project. So, there are, after looking at this, uh, we consider there are three major aspects for integrating an environmental impact assessment process into a project <coughs> development system. And they have to do with interdependency of the EIA and the project designer. The second one has to do with synchronization of the environmental impact assessment and the project extension process. And the third one has to do with interdisciplinary, that is involving the appropriate and right people or persons or groups into the stakeholder engagement process and all the multidisciplinary approach to get this project done. If you look at integrating the EIA into the project planning process, well, there are, we, we can say there are three major ways to do that. You can have a sequential process, that is, you develop the project, then you develop your EIA, and you have a modified project with some mitigation measures, or many mitigation measures. That is, if you will, a sequential process. You can have a concurrent process in which you have the engineering and economic work being done, and in parallel, you have the environmental impact assessment being conducted. At the end of the day, you have an outcome which is a project, which is an improved project with some mitigation measures. And of course, you have your ultimate goal, which is to have an integrated environmental impact assessment process within the project development cycle and development project. That will give you an environmental sound and robust project. The bottom line is that the EI team has to work in an interdependent or independently with the project engineers, the economists, etc., to actually seek that uh, robust, sound environmental uh, project at the end of the day. The second aspect that I was mentioning is the link between the EIA process and the project life cycle. The EIA has to be in sync with how the project is being developed. Otherwise, you may have commission, or you may have you may commission an EIA at a very pre-feasibility, very uh, initial project uh, development cycle in which you still you don't have many of the definitions of the project. And that would not, that would not be as appropriate as either the, the having an EIA being done after a project has been designed. So what you have to do is try to sync the development of the EIA with the project development. And for that is what this is trying to match that for the screening section, if you will, of the EA, it has a project concept being developed, and so forth for a scoping, a pre-feasibility study, for auditing and monitoring, your ready and your operations, etc. So try to match and try to link your EIA process with the project life cycle uh, stages, if you will. And the third criteria, which was most important also, is the EIA and the timely uh, uh, providing timely uh, key information for decision makers. Of course, the EIA is not a linear process uh, uh, and the project development cycle cannot be also only a straight linear process. It has to be a loop in which you can retrofit the project with the findings of the EIA. And you are identifying impacts and measures. If you incorporate that into the essence, into the design of the project, what you're looking for is to have a project that already incorporates the best environmental alternatives and social alternatives, so you have a minimum mitigation to do at the end of the day. And that's exactly what this process like this should look like, and that is the aim, if you will, of this, uh, this the development guidance that we're developing. So what we did then, we put all of this into practice into a specific implementation of this, and we map what was an ideal environmental impact assessment process with the existing new uh, front and loading uh, project development system that Deme has developed. And we did that for FEL1 with all of the, if you will, the components of the EIA for the second stage or FEL2 of the project, the same with the third stage of the, of the project, all the way until execution and possible. By doing that and, and doing that gap analysis, executing a gap analysis between the proposed uh, EIA process, the existing EIA process, the way it is and how it works within the front and loading process, then we start identifying 
those areas in which additional work needed to be done and how to make that connection then between the environmental impact assessment and the front end audit process. And we went through that, identified all of the activities, all of the requirements, and uh, again, the process of the EIA versus the PEMEX the project development process. We continue to do that. Uh, for example, we are, uh, identified the participation of the stakeholders. This is just one example to make sure that it's considered throughout the appropriate uh, felt to uh, through the public consultation process. And just, just as an example. And then we map, once we did a gap analysis, then we map uh, very clearly what those entries or uh, into or, or inputs into the, uh, the front end loading or project development process, the EIA has to have to make it a robust system. And uh, we took and we went through each of the different steps of the project development process, incorporating and initiating and understanding what the input needs to be required from the environmental impact assessment. We did that, we identified, for example, for each of the specific uh, points of the EIA, what then the uh, different gates or entry points into the project uh, development system PEMEC was, and also what are those resources or uh, validation uh, people that have to be involved uh, on organizations to validate each of these points. So this is, again, it's, uh, it's work in progress. We have done all of the initial uh, uh, work. Uh, we have developed the initial, we are in the development of the final guidelines. It has taken a tremendous uh, stakeholder engagement process within PEMEX. We have had several meetings, not only with the, of course, uh, among the practitioners uh, with PEMEX on environmental, health, and social in PEMEX, but also with the project uh, engineering organization in, in, uh, in, in the company. So again, at the end of the day, what we're looking for is facilities, is, is facilities that are designed that incorporate a, a robust system, and this system should facilitate what is the decision-making process when you move from one gate or a stage into the next one. It's, it has to promote a shift in focus from a just obtaining a permit and mitigating impacts to actually avoiding impact. And that is the key and the heart of this project is to actually embed that environmental impact assessment process in a project in a cycle. And then, of course, achieve better planning, environmental planning and design, uh, uh, ensure that the saving in project capital and operating costs are achieved by implementing the system, and reduce the time and cost of, uh, of getting projects approved. And I cannot re-emphasize, uh, based on experience, based on uh, former positions held and working with different companies, that the most important fact I mean, uh, in this uh, particular project, and I have to really congratulate them on this, is how they are trying to match and embed this environmental impact assessment process, working in completely coordination and embedding this into the project development cycle. Many times, uh, experience uh, indicate that the, the environmental impact assessment is very robust, and this conference is, is proof of that, uh, but many times there is not a synchronization with the project development cycle, so you may have a tremendous study, a fantastic environmental impact assessment that is not actually implemented because the project is going at a different pace, and it's not, it's not getting the input from that environmental impact assessment. And that's what this uh, uh, methodology and process and guidelines are intended to do to ensure that that is incorporated and to achieve the benefits that are highlighted in this, uh, in this uh, last uh, slide. So that's the presentation and thank you.